Chase, where the driver was attempting to outrun seven or more photographers. The public blamed the paparazzi. After the accident, no photographer was safe from criticism. Even photographers who had never stalked celebrities a day in their life were receiving insults regularly. Bystanders would even yell, you killed Princess Diana, during most news events. The paparazzi's job is to satisfy the audience's curiosity about celebrities. Even though celebrities are public figures, the paparazzi in the past and present has sometimes overstepped their boundaries. This includes not, only, not constantly taking photos of celebrities and public figures themselves, but also their family members. California State Assembly. They have a bounty on their heads every day. My 17-month-old baby is terrified and cries. My four-year-old says, why do these men never smile? Why do they never go away? Why are they always with us? This week... just whiny celebrities that many times people think we are. They have the right to take the photographs as much as I hate it, as much as I hate that my children are objectified that way. This bill still allows them to do that. What we're asking them to do is to take these pictures with some dignity. I love my kids. They're beautiful and sweet and innocent. And I don't want a gang of shouting, arguing, law-breaking photographers who camp out everywhere we are, all day, every day, to continue traumatizing my kids. Altogether, most of the public tends to associate photojournalists and the paparazzi together. However, there are key differences between the two. While the paparazzi takes photos of celebrities, photojournalists take photos anywhere from hard news, such as war and disasters, to features and profiles to inform the public of events and or the world around them, at the same time hitting the public emotionally through visual storytelling. The photos are not staged. They are real. The paparazzi may have to go through a sea of people to get some posed stage shots of public figures. It may even harass them, just like the incident with Princess Diana and many others. But a photojournalist's golden rule is to do unto others as you would have them do unto you. This rule may conflict with an absolute theory where in a specific situation a journalist may have to break the rule in order for the greater good meaning if ignoring an individual's right to privacy would be good for the public. A photojournalist will strive to cover people and events in public and respect the photographic move moment, as it is stated in the National Press Photographers Association Code of Ethics. While covering news, photojournalists do their best to tell the story, and tragically, sometimes the story could end with their lives. This is something the paparazzi may never face. The only cost they will pay will be to pay for sources, interviews, or shots. We mentioned at the top, part of the program is elsewhere tonight. That's because two members of a treasured group of men and women have died doing what all of us need someone to do. They died trying to provide a clear, honest, human view of war, uncut by disinformation and propaganda. Photojournalist Tim Hetherington and Chris Hondros killed in Libya in the battle for Misrata. This is new video of the fighting there. As always, with amateur video, we can't say exactly when or where it was taken. Somewhere in the chaos, though, Tim and Chris were killed today, Tim by a rocket-propelled grenade. Russia has confirmed the death of photojournalist Andrei Stenin in East Ukraine. Andre worked for Russia state-owned RIA Novosti News Agency and went missing in early August. Rock and Syria released a video on Tuesday, which appears to show the second beheading of a U.S. journalist in two weeks. In the video, Stephen Sotloff is seen wearing an orange jumpsuit, like the prisoners at Guantanamo. He's kneeling in the same position as ISIS's previous victim, journalist James Foley.